spoiled glass really adds a lot of dimension and interest to a piece. When you have all these different colors that are boiling up and spreading out over the top piece of glass, it makes for a very interesting design. I've had a lot of individuals ask me how to accomplish this look, the look of boiled glass. So let's look at some of the methods you could use. You could first off heat your glass to about 1600 to 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. When glass gets to this temperature it starts breaking down chemically and starts boiling or bubbling up to the surface. As it's doing this method it's pulling the colors from the other layers to the top. Then you would need to cool it down to about 1500 degrees to even out the bubbles. I find that this method is very unpredictable. The second way you could do this would be to add bubble power to the lower level, or the lowest level. On this you would just take a blank piece of glass, add a little bubble powder, and then the other layers of glass that you want to use. Heat it up, and as the bubbles start rising to the surface, they pop and spread the colors from the other layers across the surface of the top layer. The last way that I know of you could do this would be to arrange your glass so that it would trap air. You would have a blank piece of glass on the bottom level and then a few pieces of other glass of various colors and chunks and sizes so that air will get trapped in this area and then other layers on top of that. As the glass is heated up the bubbles that are caused from the trapped air will rise to the surface and pop and pull up other colors from the other layers to the top surface. Okay, I've done a video to show you how I've accomplished this. Okay, today we're going to attempt a technique called boiling glass. <coughs> glass doesn't boil in the same way like water does, but I'm told that as you heat glass up to about 1800 degrees, the components start to break down and they start to rise up and bubble through the glass layers that are above it. So I'm using four layers. You need to have at least three to four, three or more layers to bubble up through each other. Since they say that glass will lose its components and break down and start bubbling up at about 1800 degrees, I'm going to bring this piece up to that temperature and see what happens. But to be sure I get some bubbles, I'm also going to add a little bubble powder just on this side of my glass and that will also enable the bubbles. I'm only going to put it on one side and see how that works. As you can see by this view of my kiln I have a dam built up. The bubble powdered glass is going to go onto a piece of fiber paper board that is fairly thick Trying to grab it just by the edges here and place it into the dam. The bubble powder is on the right hand side here, I believe. Let me double check. Yes, the bubble powder is on the right. Okay, so build up the other side of my dam here. This is just so that the glass doesn't flow all over the kiln and end up on the kiln bottom. Okay, everything's in place. My dam is built up. We're ready to go. Okay, for this firing, I've got, I'm using my segment six with four different segments in it. Let's take a look at them. I'm going to rank it up full till I reach a thousand degrees. Then I'm going to hold it for 15 minutes. Then I'm going to bring it up as fast as possible to 1800 degrees going to hold it for five minutes, bring it down full to 1500 degrees to let the bubbles pop and even out. Then I'm going to hold it for 10 minutes at that temperature and then ramp it down at full speed to 950 and hold for an hour and then it'll shut off. We'll see how it does. Okay, as you can see, my glass is slowly climbing up. I've decided instead of taking it up to 1800 degrees, I'm going to take it up to 1700 degrees because the glass is supposed to boil between 16 and 1700 degrees. So we'll take a look at it again in just a little while. 
Okay, here's my piece inside the kiln. It's finished fusing and annealing and it's at room temperature now. You can see by looking at this piece, the side that I put the bubble powder on has a lot more bubbles than the side that was just raised to the uh, temperature suggested to uh, enable bubbles. Uh, there are a few bubbles, but they're few and far between. Um, the bubble powder really accentuated and added a lot more bubbles. So I think I'm a little more pleased with the bubble powder effect, and that's probably the one I'll use in the future. Thank you.